Okay, let's consider a situation where you're given that the null hypothesis is that the mean is 20, the alternative that it's less than 20, and that you have a level of significance of 0.05. So what I have drawn here is the distribution if HO is true. So I have a mean of 20, and since I'm going in the downward direction, look at HA is less than, my, I'm going to draw a line here and put 0.05, my level of significance, in the left-hand tail. Again, that's because I have less than here. So what that's going to do, now let's suppose that we looked on whatever chart we had and that we found that that value was 18. That means that, that would be the, our critical value, or we're going to reject any time we get less than 18. So we can look at this as, let's say, a line of demarcation. Any time we get below 18, we're going to reject HO. Any time we get above 18, we're going to fail to reject HO. So if HO really is true, if the mean is 20, and we did reject HO, we'd be wrong because HO was true, but we rejected it. And that would be a type 1 error, and the probability of that is the alpha, the 0.05. And if HO was true and we failed to reject HO, then we didn't make an error. Okay, so now on the top here I have just the same graph reproduced with the HO, the mu is 20, and the alpha is down here. Now what I have on the bottom is another given. That is that the true but unknown population mean really has a mean of 17. So I'm drawing that curve out here with a mean of 17, and now I've extended that line of demarcation, that 18, on into this distribution as well. So the point of demarcation between reject and fail to reject is the same at the same spot on both of them. So again, we're rejecting HO if we get less than 18. And if the real mean is 17 and we rejected HO, then we didn't make an error. Okay? That, in fact, is called the power of the test. So the area on, area on this curve that's less than 18 is the power of the test. On the other hand, if we fail to reject HO, but the mean's really 17, in other words, we should have rejected HO, but again, it's done the same scale up here. Reject, fail to reject is demarcated at 18. So if the real mean is 17 and we fail to reject that the mean was 20, then we might have made a type 2 error, and that's beta is the probability of type 2 error, and that's the area under the curve that's 18 and up. Okay, one more thing on this. The left-hand side of this, those are the same curves as we had on the previous two slides. And on the right-hand side here, I've redrawn what the distribution would look like if HO was true. See, it has a mean of, population mean of 20, and then we just have the, uh, the bell curve. Now what I'm saying is we have some data and we found that X is 16. So the 16 on this is what we have from the data. When we were over on the left-hand side here, there was no data. That was just all sort of a, a theoretical kind of how things would be if HO was this and then also if we had this true but unknown. But now we have something that we know. We have an X of 16. So when we look at p-values, we're going to look at it's calculated with the distribution where HO is true. So we just find that 16 on the HO distribution and get the area below that, in this case below 16, and that's your p-value. So this is uh, just a little piece of problem 3 on uh, your homework assignment. Problem 3 out of the foundations text. And it had a, an HO of P equal to 0.5 and an H1 of P less than 0.5. So on the left-hand side, they have the null distribution. And so I think it said 2% level. So if you add up those two bottom bars there, 0.5 and 0.15, you'll get 2%. So the line of demarcation is going to be at 0.4. So from here down, from 0.4 down, you could make a type 1 error. Of course, if you got anything up here, you would not have made an error. So to get the type 2 error and the um, power of the test, just go back, go over to the alternative distribution and 
get to that same point of 40. See, it was 40 over in the null, and we had type 1 error down here, and then we were correct on the other part. Well, the same point here is 0.4 on this one, except for now, when we are under 40, we would have made no error. This is then, on this side, the power of the test. Sorry, I'm not very good at writing with this thing. And then from here up again above the 40, that will be uh, beta or the type 2 error, the probability of a type 2 error. Okay, so the other thing to look at is the p-value. And again, the p-value is always evaluated in terms of null distribution. So I believe in this problem it said that you found a proportion of 0.45. And so going in the same direction as your alternative hypothesis, we'll go from 0.45 down, and that will give you the p-value. Okay, hope that helps.